Hello, everyone, and welcome to the panel room on Continual, the con that never ends. Tonight, we've got a new feature where we're having reviewers talk books. And we have some fabulous folks with us tonight, and I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves. Jay, why don't we start with you? Sure. Um, hi, my name is Jay. I run an LGBTQ romance review blog called Joyfully Jay. Um, we are coming up this fall on our 10 year anniversary. And um, we review probably in the 15 to 20 books a week. And I have about eight different reviewers who um, review for me. And like I said, we review primarily romance, um, LGBTQ, but also some um, romantic fiction, nonfiction, um, and other things that sort of fall under that larger uh, literature umbrella. That's so cool. How about you, Jeff? Hi, I'm Jeff. Uh, I am one half of the Big Gay Fiction podcast. Uh, my husband and I uh, have been doing the show now. We're actually going to celebrate our 300th uh, episode uh, in early awesome. April. Uh, so we've been going about five and a half years now. Uh, each week we have author interviews, but we also review a good number of books. Jay is actually one of our contributors uh, talking to us about what she's reading. Plus, Will and I read a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, primarily romance, but we do branch out into some other areas uh, periodically as well. Most excellent. Jose? Hello, I'm Jose Bugran. Um, I write uh, book reviews for the Washington Independent Review of Books, and I also am a contributor to other, for the Big Thrill, the e-scene or e-magazine from the International Thriller Writers. And that by itself is a giveaway to book, what kind of books I read, right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm right there with you. I'm always reading thrillers, uh, suspense, and romantic suspense. So we, I think amongst us, we'll be able to recommend some great books tonight. So what are some new and forthcoming books that have got you really excited that you're really looking forward to? Let's start with you, Jose. Well, I've been trying a couple of ways to get my hands into Razor Belly Tears by uh, Sean Cosby. And I haven't managed yet. <laughs> I'm still trying. But that's one of the ones that everybody's talking about. And uh, because that's his second book, I believe, or third book, but the last one, uh, Wasteland Top, uh, was uh, really good and, and everybody was talking about it, even Stephen King. Oh, well, that's a good recommendation. <laughs> yeah, it is. So I'm looking forward to reading this one. Cool. Jay, what about that's you? The top one. <laughs> Um, let's see, you know, one thing that I am sort of looking forward to and in the middle of um, is a series that is a shared world series called the um, Vino and Veritas series. It takes place in Ser author Serena Bowen's um, World of True North universe. So I am, I think about five or six books into the um, Vino and Veritas series, which is their LGBTQ um, piece of this larger world. And um, there are... Uh, you know, books by all kinds of different authors that all sort of center around the same wine store, um, wine bar bookstore. So I am very much looking forward to digging further into those. I have loved that authors have been doing more of that. There's a whole group series called 1001, 1001 Dark Nights. Yes. And the, yes. the wide variety of books in that and the high quality of all the books in that has continued to be an absolute delight. So um, Jeff, what about you? What's something that's on your top to read list. Oh, coming up in May is the last book in Layla Rain's Fog City series. Oh, yeah. I have adored the Fog City series since it started. The original trilogy uh, that brought this crime boss together with uh, a federal investigator was just incredible. I'd never really seen a series that had put essentially the person you might think is the bad guy. Uh, at the forefront of, of the story. But that original trilogy was great. She's just come out with book four, uh, which is the, one of the sisters' story, uh, which was called Queen's Ransom, which was really good. But it's going to wrap up in May with, um, oh, Jay, help me out. I just blanked out on it. And um, why am I blanking on the other guy's name? <laughs> ah, we just, it's Holt's book. Uh, and it is, oh gosh, you just talked about it. This Silent Night. Terrible. Silent, Silent Night. Night. Silent Night, yes. Silent Night, which focuses on the techie of the group, a uh, brother named Holt, uh, and his ongoing relationship, 
on and off with one of the police force. So we keep bringing the, the so-called bad guys in with the good guys. <laughs> I have been so intrigued by Holt since the beginning. I'm so mm-hmm. excited that this book is coming out in May. Uh, it's in my TBR right now, and I can't wait to dig into it. I was in on a panel. Jay, you moderated it, I think. Yes. The one with Layla, where, uh, or actually you moderated our, our thing. when I had read her variable onset, which is the yes. one with the yes. uh, um, genealogist, the forensic genealogist. And yeah. pardon? Is it serial killer? Yes. Yeah. And uh, because we were going to be on this thing together, oh, well, I would like to read something that this other person has had. And I was hooked and I bought the other series. I haven't started mm-hmm. reading it. That's my treat for when I finish my pages. But <laughs> hurry up and finish your pages because all I, of her books, that really? variable onset was great. Trouble Brewing, Irish and Whiskey, the whole thing is just brilliant. Yeah, she does great romantic suspense. Yeah. Well, I really want to read the series with the crime boss, though, because that just looks thoroughly intriguing Mm -hmm. so so what are some books that you think uh that you see these we've sort of been talking about authors that already have books out there and are sort of already well known have you found any uh new and emerging authors that you're looking forward to writing uh reading or writing reviews of or that um that is sort of an undiscovered gem what let's go back to you jeff what about you have you found some things that are like you're going to tell everybody about so it, it, within the next couple of weeks, we're going to have episodes where I both review and talk to debut author Robbie Couch. Mm-hmm. He's got a new young adult book coming out called The Sky Blues. And it's a little bit Simon versus the Homo Sapiens agenda, a little bit like uh, the Broadway and movie musical The Prom. Uh, it's, it's, it's a bit rom-com, a little bit mystery because we've got a young man named Sky, appropriately, uh, he is getting ready to prom pose to somebody at school, but he's not really sure if Ali is gay or bi or straight or whatever, but he's, he's been crushing on this kid forever and he's going to give it a go. But then the big plan to do this promposal gets leaked in an email blast that goes out to the school. You can oh, imagine no. what happens from there. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot of homophobia going on there, but his friends rally around him big facets of the school rally around him all of these different people kind of surface and the the overall message to me here that i really liked was that you know it takes a lot to let yourself be seen to your friends and on the other side you don't know what people are holding back who you think you know but you kind of don't and the way that all of this kind of comes together as people try to solve who did this leaking of the information is really brilliant. Yeah. Plus, there's a nice little side bit about some stuff going on with Sky's family that I don't want to spoil because it's really tender and beautiful. But it's a tremendous debut book, and I really hope a lot of people, you know, pick it up and, and give it a look because it's it's just super good. Cool. What about you, Jose? What's something new and different that's coming up on your watch? Uh, I recently read. The Kingdoms by Natasha Pulley. And this is a British author. I don't think this is her first book though, but this one is really interesting. It was way beyond my my normal reading. It was assigned to me and I was glad they did because I actually enjoyed it a lot. It tells a story, it has, uh, it mixes genders and it stays with uh, some historical and some uh, time traveling. And I don't want to give too much away of it, but it's, uh, it's really good and it's a little bit of historical and what stories and what the story might have been is something really small change in the past and how that affects into the present and, and it jumps back and forth and everything it can sub- jumble up and then you end up with a, with a train station in London with a French name, for example. Oh, wow. And so it's, uh, it's really entertaining. I really enjoyed it a lot. I am so that's serious. my recent discoveries, and and the I cannot say much because the actual review that I wrote uh, for the Washington Independent it's going to be released until May. So uh, oh. I give you up to <laughs> I recently discovered an author named Ren Chupico, and her first book was a book called The Bone Witch, and she's on her third book in it now, and it's one of those ones that you just can't stop thinking about. It's mm-hmm. so such an intriguing concept. And the way she set up the world and I just couldn't stop thinking about it. And so I got the second book and now I'm eagerly awaiting the third. <laughs> that works. 
Yeah, it is. And I'm so glad to find new people like that. It's always such a joy. Um, Jay, what about you? What's some, what's a new debut author or somebody that you're... Sure. Um, you know, I was looking back at my, some of my recent reading and I haven't read too many new debuts lately, but I, or do new debut authors, but I did have a recent new to me author um, that I was really excited about. Um, and this is a um, gay romance commitment issues by Ali Reichardt. And um, the author has been out there for a while, but this was the first book that I have read of theirs. And um, it is a um, age gap and um, fake relationship story. And um, if you read a lot of romance, you know, fake relationship stories are so hot right now. I mean, they're like coming out of the woodwork and um, it's a trope that I always find fun. It sort of calls back to a lot of the sort of old school romance done with a more modern twist to it. So um, this story is a, um, the character Elliot is a, um, you know, sort of older man just got out of a 10 year relationship and now he is um, expected to be the best man at a destination wedding. And of course his ex is the other best man at this oh. destination wedding. And he lets um, a friend sort of talk him into a um, sort of blind date arranged uh, uh, date with this younger college student who um, needs the money to sort of pay for all of his assorted schooling. So um, Elliot goes ahead and, um, you know, sort of hires um, Freddie to come and be his date for the weekend. And of course, what starts out as fake for the audience ends up turning into this great relationship. But um, what I really liked is that it doesn't end there after a week, which often happens and you sort of have everything crammed into a short time period. Um, they then go back home and end up continuing this relationship. And so then we get the story. Um, more extended where we sort of see them trying to make that transition from oh where well, this is just casual to serious as often happens in romance land but um I was really excited by this because first time reading this author so I'm definitely keeping my eyes out for more now excellent I know that for me that sometimes an author will go from one genre to another and mm -hmm. I don't always follow I don't know about y'all but um I'm a big fan of Nalini Singh's uh, mm -hmm. two big series. Both of them are, are romance, or I guess they could be termed paranormal romantic suspense. But she has now written two straight suspense novels, and they are outstanding. If mm -hmm. uh, uh, The Quiet Inner Bones and I forgot uh, this, uh, um, A Madness of Sunshine, I think is the other one, and they are outstanding. If uh, if you're up for a uh, from Nalini, if you're up for something from Nalini that doesn't have romance in it, and the other one that I'm really looking forward to, I don't think it's out yet, but it's called um, Finley Donovan is Killing It. And Jeff, you mentioned uh, uh, a YA book, and I was first introduced to, her, to El Casamano, who's the author, um, through Thriller Fest. And Jose, I know you're associated with Thriller Fest and the Izan you said, but um, I read for the Thriller Fest contest, I read her young adult novel, which was absolutely gripping. It was fabulous. So I saw that she was doing this adult book, which is a suspense, and I'm really looking forward to it because it's it's billed as kind of a rom, sort of a, not a rom-com, but sort of a comic suspense it, she's sort of a single mom and, you know, it's kind of a little bit of a romp at the beginning, but the turns really serious. So I'm looking forward to that one. What, and uh, so uh, any, any others that y'all are looking forward to? Jose, any others that if you're you looking forward to? I, I read this one, but I would like to recommend you this one. Uh, if you like people crossing genres, uh, Alma Katz, who just got a book out called Red Widow. She's known for paranormal and uh, historical novels. And this one is a straight uh, spy fiction. And what's interesting about it and why it took her so long to write this one is because she works at the CIA. So this is the book she should have been written like five, 10 years ago. And she's something now going into a straight fiction and, and she did a really good job. I just read that one, it came out in, in March. Jay, any others you'd recommend from uh, that on maybe somebody who's trying a new field or? Oh, that's a new genre. Um, hmm. That's a hard one. I don't know that I know 
of any off the top of my head of people who are who are switching. I do know one of my favorite authors, um, Ian Lindsay, actually is um, branching out from largely contemporary romance to paranormal um, under a new pen name. And I want to say it's Ariel, and now I'm blanking on the last name, but they have a, um, that book is actually coming out, I believe in a month and I'm super excited because I would pretty much follow um, them anywhere. And so I'm excited about um, the transition, but Ian Lindsay is the main pen name. So I'm sorry, I'm blanking on the new pen name, but if you look for one, you'll find, uh, I'm sure you'll be able to find their other one. And is it Ian, I-A-N? E-M, yep. E-M Lindsay. Okay, cool. Jeff, anything else that you'd love to recommend that's maybe somebody switching genres or coming out with something new? Well, there's a whole anthology getting ready to come out in April called Taking a Chance. Mm -hmm. And the idea behind this anthology is they got these 17 authors to, as they put it, you know, break outside their normal box as part of International Take a Chance Day. So each of these authors is going to spin up something new in a okay. genre they have not written in before. Uh, and there's a lot of authors in there. I won't list off the 17 of them, <laughs> but this, this anthology too is also going to be benefiting uh, the AIDS Healthcare Foundation, uh, which is a global nonprofit providing uh, care in like to over 1 million people in 43 countries. So it's gonna be serving a very good, a very good cause. Well, at the same time, giving us all a chance to read some of these authors try something completely different from what we know them for. What a great concept. And it's called Take a Chance? Taking a Chance, yeah. Taking a Chance, okay. It comes out on I, April 23rd and it will be one of those limited time anthologies. Excellent. I, uh, I love things like that because first of all, you get new authors and you get to see, you know, sort of what their voice is like. And uh, I mentioned this when we were all talking before we started recording is I end up doing carpool a lot of the time. So you sit. Well, I always have a book, but I love it when I can have like an anthology because for the 30 minutes you have to sit, I'm mm -hmm. a fast reader. So usually I can get through a story or novella or something. Like so I love things like that. I'm super excited to hear that. And uh, I've, I've now made a note. I will get that. <laughs> so uh, what are some hot trends you all see coming? Is there anything in the books that you're being asked to review or that are coming down the pike? Uh, maybe Jose, you can tell us that you're getting books or seeing books that are that are trending that maybe is a hot new trend for summer, beach reads, pool reads? More than books, I want to touch base on, on, on something uh, different on the way we read. Uh, and I'm talking about audiobooks. I think they are trending for the last two, three years. They be, have like a big boom. And I would like to touch base on that uh, because uh, I had a funny story about audiobooks. The first one, I, the, because I was raised in Spanish, I didn't read all the English uh, classics as opposed to you guys. So it took me until I was 30 years old when I started reading Huckleberry Finn. And I tried reading that a couple of times and I couldn't. <laughs> uh, for obvious reasons, you know, how the, how the writing is phonetic and I couldn't write make it out until I found an audiobook narrated by Elijah Wood who played Huckleberry Finn in a movie a few years before and I loved it it was uh, one way to discover classic and it was uh, really something and this was like four or five years ago before the big boom of audiobooks and so that's the trend and I think that would be great for going and sitting by the beach with the cocktail or the margaritas and the uh, and, and enjoy an audiobook. And, and what about you guys? Do you think this is the, the next strength? Is, uh, is that the future of books now? Audiobook is huge in, in romance. I mean, definitely, I agree with you. Last few years, I think there has been a huge um, push. And a lot of books now I'm seeing are um, happening either simultaneously or very shortly after with the audio, which is, yes. I think, also new because audio is really expensive. And so a lot of times, I think authors sort of wait to see how the book does before they're willing to invest. And now I'm seeing a lot of audio either simultaneous or very shortly, you know, sort of in production right with the end of that book. So I agree with you. It's become um, super popular. We probably review maybe 15, 20% of our books in audio, but we could do more, I think, 
only we're really limited by the fact that audio just takes a lot longer to get through. So, you know, I can read a book in three days and it might take me three weeks to listen to it in audio. But I think from a reader end, there's so much more opportunity now than there was to really find those books. And I agree with you that I think there's some books that I find are more accessible in audio, whether it's, you know, the writing style or the way that the narrator can sort of bring something to life and build tension. Oftentimes I find if you get a good narrator in suspense or, um, mm -hmm. you know, things that sort of have a lot of tension or excitement, you can really add a layer on top of what the author is writing. And it's almost like a performance that's just adding that in. So I agree with you. Audio is definitely, um, I think, hot and very much, I think, here to stay. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with that as well. Uh, I'll get some audiobooks because of the narrator. I will try out authors I've never tried because of who's narrated the book. Yeah. Um, because they could definitely bring a performance to it that is different than me just reading it. And I'd say I, I probably take in at least half of the books that I read through audio uh, because I can do them faster. <laughs> you mentioned it could take you three weeks. It, it helps me get through them faster because uh, I will bump up the speed on them. Right. Uh, to go through them faster. Um, I'll put my author hat on for a moment at, at, when we look at audiobooks. You know, and one of the things that I think is becoming problematic is some of the things around how Audible is allowing returns. Oh, uh, yeah. You could listen yeah. to the whole book and still return it, and yeah. then it, you know, the author loses the money. I think, you know, as a collective readers and authors, we have to keep in mind what we're doing there because we could get to the point where some of our favorite authors don't see the financial return in audio right. and stop doing it. Right. Um, I see chatter around that. And, you know, it's, it's about, you know, audible is not Kindle unlimited where you just get to check it out and then put it back and everybody right. is happy. If you return a book, you're taking money out of the author's pocket. And right. I think we just have to be cognizant of that and, and look to, if we buy a book, we get, we keep the book unless it was something was wrong in those first, maybe 20% or something. So that's me being on my soapbox for a moment <laughs> around audio. Yeah, absolutely agree. Totally agree with that. Can, uh, can I have a follow-up question on that subject? Uh, sure. Do you think, uh, Jeff, that, that those returns are probably books that they sold by mistake, or do you think that's the reader uh, punishing the author saying, I didn't like it, I'm returning it. And, and that's my review. Instead of a review, I'm returning the book. I actually don't think it's either of those. Yeah, I agree In most with cases, you. I think... What we're seeing are people who you know read the entire book, and if you didn't like the the book, you probably should have stopped reading it before you got to the end. Okay. But we see stuff in online groups, and you know people even talking about what they're doing, and they're treating their Audible credits like a library. It's like I take, I check it out, I read it, I finish it, and I return it, so I can use the credit over again. And Audible's partially to blame for this because they've allowed a return policy that makes that happen, and you know people have exploited that policy. Um, you know, I know, you know, if I don't like a book, I'm probably going to figure that out within the first 20%. <laughs> well, and sometimes it's not even the book, it's the narrator, but, sure. but you know that in the first 10 minutes of the, if the oh, yeah. narrator is going to irritate the crap out of you, you know that in the first 10 minutes of listening to it. And it, it's a cheat. It's just like downloading books on pirate sites. It's a cheat. And yeah. it, for those of us who are authors, it is taking money out of our pockets and it, it's keeping us, I mean, some of us, I mean, I know that I have not done Audible yet because the upfront investment is so steep. And, but yet I have, every time I've done a con, which has been at least a year, <laughs> but even at that point, people were saying, well, are your books going to be in Audible? Can, you know, can I get the witch's walk in Audible? Cause I really want to listen to it. And I'm like, I wish, you know, it's just the, the cost is prohibitive. Now that is coming down. And I think that um, some of the author groups, uh, Romance Writers and uh, Authors Alliance and several others are working with Audible and some of the other um, uh, audio, audiobook companies to see if they can't get that changed. Yeah, Audible's certainly gotten better. They've changed it from up to a year to I think it's seven days now that you can return it. But that's still plenty of time to listen to a book and yeah. turn yeah. it back. I mean, I'm it, hearing stories about people who say that they have somebody buy one book at a time in their series 
you know, I read book one, I return it, I use the credit for book two, book three, book four. So I agree with Jeff. I think that there probably is a small portion that this is a, you know, sort of protest, didn't mean it, whatever. But, um, and listening to readers comment on Facebook, there's very clearly a large subsect that are purely doing it because they can and Audible's letting them um, and are in fact, you know, going out and just returning books. So I think somebody counted, it was like 40, 50 times that they use the same credit to buy another book. Oh so my word. Without wow. being stopped by Audible to say, hey, what's going on? So it definitely seems to be a problem. Yeah. Bush. Audible or audiobooks? Yeah. Audiobooks in general. Audiobooks in general. Yeah, absolutely. It's such a tremendous way to take in the book. I mean, as Jose noted, it's a way for people also to, you know, help learn English, help read a book they haven't read otherwise. It's a great thing for accessibility because for people who can't, you know, read the book on, on, on a page or on a tablet to be able to have you know, the listening experience. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Kindle itself isn't that accessible. And so you need a way to be outside the Amazon ecosphere sometimes to be able to listen to the book and right. to be able to, you know, interact with that content. So I definitely think audiobooks are going to be and continue to be, you know, what's out there. And, you know, hopefully we find ways to make the investment for authors easier. Because, I mean, no matter, even without the returns, it's still the most expensive piece of creating your, right. the, the products around your book. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I think that, it, you know, you mentioned Jose sitting on, at the beach, listening to the book with your margarita. That, that's just such a delightful image. <laughs> like, it's like, <laughs> wow, I'd really like to do that. <laughs> what are some books that, you know, you would say, whether they're new or not, that you would say, hey, this is a, this would make a great beach read. This would make a great poolside margarita read. This would make a great carpool read. Jose? Uh, okay, this book, I read it like every other year, and you can see how turned and worn out this is. It's the Godfather edition after the movie came out. And I love this book. This is the book that actually turned me into a writer myself. I, I love this story, and I love the book more than I love the film. And part of the reasons that I love the film in the beginning is because it was released on the year that I was born. But still reading the book was a great experience for me. I read it often. Uh, I like the philosophy of the, in, in, that it shares with the families and how the respect and the loyalty and that's everything that actually struck a chord with me. And that's a book that's been around for like, I don't know, 50 years now. And people are still reading it. And, I, and to me, it's like a new classic. Yeah, I'd say so. Now, it's not as much of a thriller, though. You, you, do you have a thriller to recommend? Oh, um, okay. Let me see. A thriller. I have a list here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, this one, it, you got me concentrating on debut orders that I put everything out of my, <laughs> my head. Uh, I have Fast Eye by, Eyes by Clive Costler and Graham Brown. I just read that, and, and it's, it's amazing. Uh, Clive Costler is one of my top three authors. Uh, I started reading them back in the 90s, and uh, I've been a fan since then. And after he passed away last year, I think his legacy lives on with the, uh, the co-authors. And Graham is a great guy. He runs the Numa Files, and that was one of the first spin-offs that came out. And Fast Eyes is a really nice adventure, and it's coming out in, uh, or came out in March. Excellent. Great recommendation. Jay, what about you? Um, I would say for sort of light and fun, um, one that I just read um, is called Sweet as Honey, which is um, author Lucy Lennox's Astro Valley series. So this is a new, new-ish series. There's two books now, and there was a prequel um, that came out in, just in, I guess, the very beginning of January, and then two full books since then. And this is sort of um, sweet, fun, yummy, small town um, romance that takes place in this sort of idyllic, um, as Romance Land does, idyllic small town in Colorado. But um, 
the story is between a um, character Truman who is sort of a native of the town and who is um, the object of a lot of ire from people for something that they believe he did as a child that sort of threw off the economy um, in the town. And um, so he's got a lot of people sort of don't like him and are after him. And then Sam, who comes into town to visit with friends who are the main characters of the previous book and uh, the two of them meet. And it's very much an opposite attract sort of situation. But I really liked... Um, the dynamic because between the characters because sometimes you can get sort of a very paternalistic sort of big tough guy with sort of um the sort of younger more vulnerable character and i liked the way that she balances the two here um and really shows truman's able to sort of stand up for himself and uh, uh handle things and sam is just sort of the helping it all together so um i'm really enjoying the series i mean lucy does really great sort of small town, sweet and sexy romance. But I think um, this series in particular is really speaking to me for some reason. I'm really enjoying the characters. I like the found family aspect of it as um, you know, the sort of people are building upon each other. Um, they're not actually relatives where a lot of her books are family members. So um, I'm having a lot of fun with this and I'm looking forward to, we get a little taste at the end of who the next main character is gonna be. So if you sort of want, sweet, sexy, fun, romantic, um, check out the Astor Valley series by Lucy Lennox. Cool. Jeff? So I want to talk about uh, a book by Adriana Herrera. Uh, she's an author of color, does incredible work. If you've, if people have not picked up the Dreamer series yet, mm -hmm. uh, which is, um, I think the first book's almost two years old now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. that whole series is amazing. She's actually nominated for a Lambda Literary Award this year in the gay romance category for Finding Joy, mm -hmm. which also absolutely incredible. That one happens to take place uh, fully in Ethiopia with two aid workers who meet there. It's oh, wow. Just cool. Amazing. But what I want to talk about is her latest release. It's called Caught Looking. And this is actually a novella. So it could be the perfect, you know, quick read at the beach, quick read by the pool or whatever. <laughs> and, and it takes place in the summer. So it all kind of connects. Um, in this book, you've got Yari, who is a superstar shortstop player in the major leagues. And Hatui, who is his best friend going back for years, also happens to be the team's interpreter. And as this story opens, these, these guys are actually in a panic because they might have just jeopardized their decade-long friendship because of one explosively passionate night they just had together. Uh, Yari is insistent that it can't happen again, but Hatui is absolutely like, oh, yes, it can. <laughs> <laughs> they immediately head off to the Dominican Republic for a series of charity events that they're doing uh, down there. And it's during this time that uh, Hatui is out to prove to Yari that he's not exactly as straight as everyone thought he was. <laughs> Hatui is really relentless, really trying to prove to Yari that they could be good together and that they could certainly move from good friends into being so much more. I have to say, on the trip, these two are so ridiculously hot. They flirt, they provoke each other, they engage in this blisteringly hot sex, and it all wraps up in this wonderful epilogue giving them their HEA. Now, Will and I are both. We love Adriana's work so, so much. But what she's done in this novella with so much character development and so much heat is just really incredible. Um, yes, the sex scenes are crazy hot, but it's the passion that these two characters actually have for each other. And it's just evident in every single page, at every single moment that these two are together, which is really the entire book. There's not much of a moment where these two are not together on page. And, you know, the loyalty that they are have as friends, you just know it's going to click as lovers as well. Yeah. Uh, it's the best, it's one of the best friends to lovers examples that we've really ever seen. And the thing that I think that is even a more credit to how she works this book is there's no meet cute at all here. It's not like friends coming back together or, you know, the book opens with these two in the aftermath of this sex that they've had, you know, sort of by accident, if you will. Um, oops. And yet, oops. <laughs> yeah. But she still manages to give you all the moments and hit all of the right beats, if you will, of what you would expect in a romance. Uh, and it's just really brilliant how it all comes together. And I can't think of really a better little beach read because it is a novella 
but it's just packed full with so much great character and really so much hotness. I mean, it, it kind of would come together as a perfect summer read, I think. That's awesome. What's not to love about that? Exactly. <laughs> uh, I would also recommend Priscilla Olivieris's, uh, she's got, it's, I think there's only two books in the series right now. It's the Keys to Love book one and two. And the, the second one, which has just come out recently is Anchored Hearts. And it's outstanding, um, super cute. And uh, it, comes, it comes out at the end of April and the series is just darling. And then if you wanna go really dark and, and spooky and thrillery, as uh, Jose would probably talk about, is um, Laura Thann White's Beneath Devil's Bridge. Her, she started out as a, uh, she wrote for Harlequin, she wrote for Silhouette, she wrote for, uh, I think Avon, or not Avon for um, Hachette. But now that she's gone to straight thrillers, wow, she has found her, you know, Jeff, you were talking about the, uh, the anthology, the taking a chance where people are trying a different genre. I think that Lorith has always been an awesome writer, but when she switched to straight thrillers, she just found her niche and man, are they good. And the um, Beneath Devil's Bridge is, I think, the fourth standalone uh, thriller that she's written. And it's, it, it's going to be outstanding. It comes out in April as well. So, um, well, we are getting very close to time. So what I'd like to do is have each of you, uh, if you want to make another recommendation before we wrap up, awesome. And then also tell our viewers where we can find you on the web and or on, in the media and um, go from there. So Jay, why don't we start with you? Any other recommendations before we, we sign off and then how can we find you? Okay, I'll do a quick recommendation because I was talking about E.M. Lindsay and I just finished their um, latest romance called other, The Other Side of Here. Um, it's an interesting setup in that um, there's an established couple, um, Sebastian and Luca, who have been married for 20 years and um, a young man, Zan, who's in his early 20s, who is um, sort of caught in the middle of an abusive relationship and knows he needs to get out, but just hasn't been able to make that move. And a um, wrong number, wrong text situation um, connects him and Luca. And as they're talking, Luca sort of realizes that this guy is not okay and reaches out even as a stranger. And the three of them um, end up texting and talking and ultimately meeting and forming this really intense connection. But Zan is very much not in an emotional place um do anything he ends up getting out of the bad relationship but really needs to sort of figure himself out and he's very drawn to this couple but doesn't realize that they are feeling the same for him and they are very much wanting to give him space so that they don't um you know to give him sort of time to come into his own and figure himself out after this really sort of traumatic um, experience. So it's a little bittersweet towards the middle as you're seeing that they all want to be together, but they don't think that they can. And then, you know, there is a happy ending at the end and I won't spoil how it all comes together. I really enjoyed it. Um, I like the, you know, sort of two people bringing in a third concept. I always enjoy those kinds of stories. And I think this is such a really um, interesting premise in that the attraction is there, the feelings are there, but the timing isn't right. And I liked the way that Lindsay really explores that fact that sometimes like everything can be, the feelings can be there, but the, the fate is just not aligning you at that time and how they ultimately come together. So um, I really enjoyed that. It is coming out. In fact, I think it came out to two weeks ago um, in When This Airs Time. Um, <laughs> and, uh, that's again, The Other Side of Here by Anne Lindsay. And if you are interested in more LGBTQ romance, um, romantic fiction, nonfiction, and all that good stuff, check us out. Um, the website is joyfully, J-O-Y-F-L-U-L-L-Y, um, joyfullyj.com. Um, I have it in my little screen name there. Um, you can also find me on Facebook, um, Joyfully J Reviews, and we have a Facebook group called The Joyful Jays. Um, I'm also on Twitter, um, at, I think it's at J-A-Y-H-J-A-Y-432. Um, but you can find all of that if you go to the website in the top bar, there is a follow button 
And if you click the drop down, you can find me in all the places. So please come stop on by. Always happy to help give recommendations. It's most excellent. Jose, what about you? Uh, first, I'd like to recommend uh, The Wicked Sister by Karen Dion. Uh, this is her second psychological thriller. It came out uh, in August of 2020. And it's an awesome book. It's about this character, a uh, young woman who grew up believing that she killed her parents. And on the first chapter, she discovers that police didn't think she did it, that there's something going on that she didn't know. And she's been in any... In, She's been uh, living for like 15 years in an institution self that she uh, got herself into an institution because she thought she killed her parents. So mm -hmm. it's a uh, very nice. Uh, and then we get to see her mother to dual timelines and we go back and forth between the, the present and how the, how the mother actually got killed. And it's a thrill of discovery. Uh, and it's a really interesting book. And it's her second one. The first one was The March King's Daughter, which is also amazing. And, and she's also a friend. <laughs> so it's, I like to recommend her books. And, and it's really amazing and how she reinvent herself. And one of the amazing things with this author is that when you see her, she looks like your favorite aunt. And you cannot believe all the <laughs> weird things that go in her mind and her writing. So it's, it's, it's really amazing. And... Um, and of course, you can find me at jhbogran.com and jhbogran at uh, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I don't know how Twitter works, but I have an account there. <laughs> still. So, uh, uh, and that's it. Great. Great, Jeff. So the last one I'll recommend for just like an off the charts kind of fun, weird sort of read is called Revenge of the Brobot. A Steam Room Story by J.C. Calciano. Uh, a lot of people may know J.C. Uh, because he's directed many films, The Ten Year Plan, E. Cupid, Steam Room Stories, the movie. Uh, he did the uh, novelization of The Ten Year Plan, but Revenge of the Robot is his first original novel. Uh, and it's, it's such a funny little rom-com with this little sci-fi twist, because obviously there's a robot in the midst of all this. <laughs> Uh, as the book opens, we meet Rob, who is a robot with an organic body. Uh, he is has been developed by Hot Body Robotics, who uh, makes robotic sex toys. But what uh, Herbie, the, the inventor, doesn't realize is that what he's been commissioned to do is create a super soldier. Um, <laughs> oops, kind of left the specs oops. out. Um <laughs> And when that's kind of uh, revealed, uh, Herbie lets Rob go. He essentially throws Herbie out of the factory. He'll create some other robots, and but he's going to set her uh, set Rob free. And it as the things happen, Rob, you know, comes across Chase, uh, who is working for a design firm. He's working on getting this big museum exhibit open. Um, Rob appears to be down on his luck because he's got nowhere to go, right? Because he's been kicked yeah. out of his factory. So <laughs> things happen and Chase invites him home. He's got a spare room and, you know, Chase's friends are like, he can take you in. Uh, what develops between these two is such a sweet romance. Uh, Rob reminds me of lo a lot of like data from Star Trek, the next generation, who can be, you know, so very smart, but then in the ways that humans work, sometimes not so much. <laughs> Uh, but they develop this really, really sweet relationship. There's a little interaction that goes on between them where Rob ends up and gives him an Apple watch because Rob got this, or, or sorry, Chase gives Rob a uh, Apple watch because Chase just ended up with this watch as part of the goodie bag from the museum function. But this little interaction they have over the Apple watch's heartbeat function is so freaking adorable. It's one of the most adorable things I've ever read in, the, in a very long time. As you can imagine, there's a big showdown that ultimately happens between the military trying to get Rob back and Chase being able to develop this relationship with Rob. I'm not going to spoil any of how that works because it's equal parts, really sweet and totally ridiculous. <laughs> um, JC's also managed to not just give this primary love story too. He pairs up so many people during this book. It's almost like a three or four for the price of one romance at the same time. So this could be another really fun beach pool read 
uh, this little, you know, sci-fi rom-com thing. Uh, cause we, I just really adored it. It was so much fun. Uh, in terms of finding the podcast, we're at biggayfictionpodcast.com. We've got new episodes that come out always on Mondays. And these days we're also releasing on a lot of Thursdays cause there's just so much content to talk about. So you can look for us there. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash biggayfictionpodcast. And on Twitter and Instagram, we are at biggayfiction. Most excellent. Well, the last thing I'd rec- like to recommend is a another one of the sort of group projects. It's called the Magic Emporium series. Mm-hmm. And it is a group of authors. I believe there are 12 of them. And the books are coming out, you know, every couple of weeks. Um, and the hook is Martin's Magic Emporium is a shop that can operate anywhere. But, uh, but it only appears in your space once and only when someone is in dire need. And so in this magic shop, it appears in your town or in your neighborhood and you walk in and you get what you need. Sometimes that's what you want. And sometimes that's just something that starts on a chain of events that Lord only knows where that's gonna end. Um, I read the first couple and they're outstanding and they're clever. Oh, so clever. I wish I had thought of this idea. but so that would be my my recommendation for beach reads and something to look forward to. And I, as I said at the start of the program, I'm Jeannie Adams. You can find me here on Continual. You can find me on the web at genieadams.com. You can find me on all of the social media, but I spend way too much time on Twitter. So you can usually find me there. So thank you again for joining us on Continual and for our new uh, program here, Reviewers Talk Books. Have a good night, everybody. <laughs>